Hi, my name is Konstantin Baum. I'm a master of wine and today I'm going to explore the differences between vintages and different maturity levels of the same wine. But I did not pick any wine for this experiment. Instead, I got two of the best vintages of one of the most expensive champagnes in the world, Röderer Kristall. And I'm going to taste them here with you. And you know what? It's still the morning, so I would call this a pretty good start into the day. The producer of this wine is Louis Röderer, a family-owned estate. Special about Röderer is that they own 240 hectares of their own vineyards, supplying 70% of the grapes they need in order to make champagne. This is different to most of the bigger houses that buy in most of their fruit. This allows Röderer a lot more control in the vineyard. 50% of the vineyards are certified organic and they do biodynamics as well. Since 2012, all of the grapes that are being sourced for Cristal are 100% biodynamic. Cristal is a vintage champagne, which means that all of the grapes come from that specific year and that it represents the quality of that vintage. Most champagne is non-vintage and vintage champagnes are generally the more expensive and more high quality wines. Comparing the two wines is fairly easy as they were made more or less in the same way. Both wines are a cuvee of 60% Pinot Noir and 40% Chardonnay. Normally Cristal is famous for not doing any malolactic conversion at all with the exception of the 1988 vintage and the 2008 vintage where 20% of the wine underwent malolactic conversion, a process that helps softening up the acidity. 20% of the 2008 vintage was vinified in oak while 32% of the 2013 vintage was vinified in oak. The dosage that determines the roundness or sweetness level of the champagne was 8 grams per liter for both vintages. The 2008 spent 8.5 years on the lease while the 2013 only spent around 6 years on the lease. The time on the lease generally indicates how creamy a champagne gets but this time also influences the flavor of the champagne. Generally notes of brioche and hazelnut come through more and more while fruit flavors go more and more to the background. So let's talk about the vintages. Vintage differences define the style of the wine, but the quality is often more in the hands of the winemaker. A great winemaker can make a great wine in a challenging year, while a bad winemaker just couldn't. But the vintage character should really come through in a great wine. And here we have two champagnes from two really good vintages. The 2008 vintage started pretty cold and the summer was also cold. So when grapes started coming in in mid-September, they were quite acidic, quite fresh, which is actually something you want for great champagne. RobertParker.com rated this vintage 99 points, which is the highest score they've ever given to any champagne vintage in history. And Wine Spectator rated it 97 points and they said the wines were vivid, well structured, in a classic style with fine textural finesse and potentially long lived. 2013 started really cold and flowering only took place in July. The summer was then pretty hot and very dry and the harvest was the latest on record since 1988. RobertParker.com rated this vintage 95 points, which is at the high end of outstanding, and Wine Spectator gave it 94 points. So you could say that both vintages were great, but the critics had a clear favorite, the 2008 vintage. Let's focus on prices now. The price of both wines is pretty high, but they are not that different. I went on Wine Searcher and checked, and the 2008 vintage currently retails for roughly 350 50 US dollars excluding taxes while the 2013 vintage retails for 300 US dollars without taxes. So yeah, this is a real luxury product, but you have to take into consideration that Röder has spent centuries perfecting their craft and that they have invested heavily into their brand and in the end people are prepared to pay for it. But the price also depends on the scores of the critics and these two wines have received great scores. Venice rated the 2008 vintage 99 points, which is as close as it gets to perfection and RobertParker.com gave it 98 points. For the 2013 vintage, Venice gave 98 points and RobertParker.com gave it 97 plus. That sounds pretty good. I'm excited to see whether the wines are actually that good. Before I jump into the tasting, if you like this video so far, then please like it down here and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. This really supports this channel, this community, so thanks for your support. Even for me, this is a pretty amazing tasting and I'm getting out my big champagne glasses. I often get questions with regards to glasses and I always put 
the glass that I'm using in the video into the description. So just check down in the description if you want to know which glass I'm drinking from. But now let's pop some corks. Castal's packaging really stands out and that is because it still pays tribute to its history. Castal was first made for the Tsar of Russia and he asked for a clear bottle because he was scared to get poisoned. And he also didn't want a pun, so he wanted a flat bottom bottle because he was scared that people might hide bombs in there. So this is what the bottle still looks like. What they added was this yellow wrapping paper in order to protect the wine from UV rays. There are no major differences in packaging between the 2008 and the 2013 vintage. They pretty much look exactly the same. Unwrapping this very much feels like Christmas. So you open expensive champagne just in the same way as you would open any other champagne. You take off the agrafe or you open the agrafe and then you turn the bottle. You have to make sure that the bottle is nice and cold, otherwise it might explode in your hand. You've seen that before on this channel, so don't be that kind of person. And yeah, that's it. There's not a real difference between the two corks, but you can see that the 2008 cork is much more compressed, which is typical because it's the older wine. The longer a cork spends in the bottle, the more compressed it gets and the more time it needs to decompress. With many high-end wines, you can find the vintage printed on the cork, which is good because sometimes during maturation, the label gets damaged and you will still be able to identify the vintage once you pop the cork. It also makes it more difficult to counterfeit a wine or a champagne. So generally have a look for the vintage once you pop your corks. I know it's a bit weird, but these corks and the agraf that is holding the cork in the bottle feel really high quality. They're quite heavy. They feel really good. I'm a nerd. So I'm going to start with the 2008 vintage and I'm going to put the 2013 vintage next to it. So this is 2008 and here comes 2013. I would say there's not a big difference in terms of color. They look kind of the same. Maybe the 2008 is slightly darker than the 2013, but it's not really pronounced. I would say the CO2 looks a little bit more pronounced in the 2008. So you can see more bubbles coming up faster but it's just a very small, very slight difference. But now let's talk about the important stuff. What does the champagne smell and taste like? The 2008 is absolutely beautiful. It smells of ripe apple, quince. There's also a little bit of pear coming through. You got those flavors of brioche, roasted hazelnuts, but they are not super pronounced. There's lots of fruit here. Even though the wine spent a long time on the lees, there's still very precise, very clean, very clear fruit flavors coming through. The nose was beautiful, but the texture is just absolutely amazing. It's mouth watering. The acidity is fresh and vibrant. There's quite a lot of it, but there's also quite a lot of texture surrounding it. So it's super light without feeling superficial. It's quite dense, concentrated and yeah, just grippy but it has this beautiful freshness and elegance at the same time. Wow. The 2013 smells of lemon zest. It's fresher, more vibrant. There's not as much depth there, even though it's quite deep as well. On the palate, it's super fresh, vibrant. The acidity is like a laser beam as well, but there's not as much surrounding it. So it doesn't have the same yeah, the same concentration, the same balance on the palate. Don't get me wrong though, the 2013 is still an amazing champagne. It's just slightly outshone by the 2008. The 2008 actually also has creamier, finer CO2 bubbles that are slightly more refined, a little rounder, a little more velvety. I decided to give the ones a little bit more time, so I let them sit in the glass for a few hours in order to make sure that they can show their full potential. This also works with sparkling wine, not just with big red wines. So let's see what they taste like now. My verdict is that both wines actually show really well and are absolutely great. Both wines also show the typicity of the vintage. They are fresh and vibrant but they also show the hand of the winemaker. So because of the long time on the lease, the 2008 actually feels quite creamy 
and the 2013 because it's been on the lease for a bit shorter it's more fresh more vibrant and more acidic i would say that both wines are absolutely outstanding world-class examples of their type but i would say that one is slightly better than the other i think the 2013 is super fresh and vibrant but it lacks the elegance and balance of the 2008 the 2008 is really really complete so i have very little that I find here and that I don't like. I would rate the 2013 97 points, so that is a very high score, but it's not perfect. The 2008 I would actually rate 100 points and I realized that this is the high score I've ever given on this channel. It's perfect, there's nothing that is missing in this wine. It's just absolutely beautiful, sensational champagne. So thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, which is your favorite vintage champagne? Comment down below and I'm looking forward to seeing which champagnes you like. I'm definitely going to stay thirsty with those two babies here on my table and I hope you stay thirsty as well. I'll see you again soon. Bye.